This is the Nebraska Broadcasters Association History Project. It's a look at the people and the personalities that make Nebraska radio and television what it has become today. We're recording today at WWT Channel 6 in Omaha. Our thanks to Jeff Saban for his help. For the NBA, I'm Neil Nelkin. Long-running, market-leading, ratings killers. That's some of the phrases that apply to our subjects today. We've got two of them here. They came to Nebraska as a team, very quickly took over the Omaha radio market. Who are they? How'd they get here? Why are they still number one in the market? Or even why are they still here? They're still here. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a little raucous today. Get ready. <laughs> Buckle your seatbelts. Today we talk to Todd Bratt and Mike Tyler. Todd and Tyler on Z92. K-E-Z-O. Thank you, Neil. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. Appreciate yeah. having you here. Yeah. Uh, you're legendary in the market. You've made a career out of Omaha radio, but... Uh, it wasn't always uh, that easy when you first started. You no. both started separately, right? Right. Who wants to take the lead on where this all began? Oh, God. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let Todd tell you eventually when he, how he got to where I'm from. But I was, because I was pretty stationary after college, I went to uh, Millersville University out of Pennsylvania. I'm from the central Pennsylvania area, Harrisburg area, Mechanicsburg. And I worked at a couple of different rock stations back there. And then I was doing afternoons at a rock station. And they had a morning show together. It was a husband and wife team. And, and it wasn't working out, and they were in that, and uh, they brought Todd in to try to help that that particular team with and the husband and wife. Yes, yeah, yeah it was called work. it was called Dave Colleen oh, uh, and Todd. There, there was no help. In it that. didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I was working the afternoons. Todd and I bonded pretty quick, even though we didn't see each other too often. A little bit in the middle mornings, but uh, we were the same age. We made each other laugh. And, uh, we did some station events together. Yeah, so, that was know, it. We had we the same bonded a bit there. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had the same uh, sense of humor. Same, uh, even though different parts of the country, you know, we we grew up the same time period, so that helped a lot. And um, that show sucked basically because because I wasn't on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Todd and I became friends. And uh, Joni, our our, our our sales manager at the time, she was actual general manager at the time. She it was a single owner station. She wasn't the owner, but she was general manager. She liked us both together. She thought she, we'd do well together, and they just put us together. She and said, you two bounce real well yeah. off each other. Yeah, so that was Southern Bell. That was uh, February of 93. I so. was skeptical. I thought that just meant, oh, you two saved me some money. <laughs> 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 but it turns out we bounced real well off yeah. each other. Yeah. So and, you're working we, together at the station in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. How long did that last before you made a move? The, that was February when they put us together. Yeah. And we were in Omaha in August. August, yeah. Why? Why'd you move? Why'd you leave? Well, we, we weren't going to make any money. Yeah, <laughs> it was a better and you knew it career yeah. move. Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I was from that area, but I, I, I had no problem leaving town because um, they were going to pay us some decent cash to come here, and I mean, at least livable money, I should say, for me. Todd had a whole family, so it, you know, I was single. So and, I saw the ad in uh, Radio and Records. Yeah, and this yeah. was a radio station that didn't take the uh, job opportunities out of the Radio and Records. We were, I've worked at places like oh that, yeah, so where, I, where yeah. they remove the. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, it, it, you probably uh, took them uh, out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Managers always, they always did. Yeah. Don't want any staff looking at them. But I had heard of Z92, and the thing that sold me, it was actually in the ad, was uh, our previous morning show um, was here for 13 years. And I was like, oh, maybe they give their morning shows a chance. Mm -hmm. And you have my resume in front of me. <laughs> There's a lot of places that really don't give morning shows a chance. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, I didn't give Todd a chance. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> or did. Yeah. <laughs> Who was the general manager here that you applied with? That'd be uh, Taylor Wallet. Well, Taylor was the sales manager. No, no, he was sales manager. It was yeah. um, Manuel Broussard. Manuel Broussard. Manuel Broussard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Taylor's still in town. We, well, that's old. Taylor had his own things. He came back and forth. But yeah. uh, but Taylor was a sales manager. Uh, Broussard was a, the general manager. That was Narragansett Radio. Narragansett. Right. You got it. Narragansett. Yep. And uh, we flew out in August of 93, maybe, maybe late Did July. Did they fly you out? You have to buy your own ticket. They flew us out. They flew us out, which I was impressed with because I hadn't done, hadn't done that before. And uh, I recall Iowa was underwater. Yes, yeah. that's well, we, summer '93. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was again this year. Yeah. And I was an East Coast guy, you know, and so flying into the, mid the Midwest to me was like, where the hell is Omaha? I mean, I was be honest with you, where's you know, it was in Nebraska, but I looked at the map, I said, holy shit, I said that's pretty far out there. But once I got here, I realized it was a big, thriving city, and everything changed then. So we moved uh, that that August, yeah. So you come to your Omaha, and you're going to launch on Z92. Yes. What'd you do? How did you prep for that first debut? Oh. What'd you think of it? Uh, 
we got a lot of pushback in the beginning because uh, they hired us for who we were, and then we showed up on the air who we were. The audience was great. The audience was 50-50 in the beginning. It was like, you ain't those guys. Who the hell are you? And then, hey, these guys, the other half, the other 50% of that audience was, hey, who are these guys? They're doing something different, and they're just talking and having a good time, raising a little hell. And so, and you, well, you're in, you've you done radio for years, and you know that if, if ratings don't come around, you don't get to keep your job. So the right. ratings came around within a year that we were starting to win in a lot of men demos, at least within yeah. a year. We uh, butted heads frequently with the uh, program director. Yeah, at, at the first. time. Yeah. But yeah, he, this was the era of the shock jock. Yeah, kind of. Yes. And we always hated that term because we really weren't trying to shock anybody because that was our personalities anyway. I mean, I we were just saying stuff we would normally say anyway, you know. But I realized we did shock a lot of people in Omaha. Mm -hmm. it, definitely. They, they had never it. heard this we did. That's we right. Did. That's right. They never did. And I didn't realize that. You're coming from the back east. I thought, you know what? We're not really that crazy. It's just I get that we probably were at the beginning here. Yeah. And, yeah. of course, who was uh, the market leader when you came to town? Uh, Rocket, Rocket was winning, yeah. I think Sweet 98. Yes, he was, yes. And uh, your original uh, purpose was to take him down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the strategy? That's a great question. Just be ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't we recall knew, we, well, putting Ro together a great plan. No, because Rocket was winning, but it was also, he was also, uh, we were on a rock station, he was on the top 40 station, although he was, you know, pretty hardcore for his time. We didn't really listen to anybody else. We just came in and did it, you know, because it was like one of the situations that we had nothing to lose. Uh, we knew we had to, uh, they wanted us to beat him, to beat Rocket. And uh, we used to do more in your face stuff, a little bit about him. Todd would call him by his real name on the air. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> and that got to it. That, that was did. part of the strategy. And we'd heard that it got to that him. Did. So we kept doing it. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, he would call us out once in a while, too. We knew that, but we really didn't, we didn't care. I mean, uh, uh, and I give Todd all the credit for that because he came out here with the whole family, and he, we were con he was, we were concerned how long this gig's going to last, you know. Uh, but, but, that, again, but but that's why we won. We didn't care. I'm used to moving, so. Yeah. <laughs> and the family is. Yeah. 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 Typical radio. So I don't know if it was a, from town to a town. strategy with Rock. It, it, it was just to be in his face a little bit, you know, and do our own thing, but be in his face. And we were playing music in the beginning too, you know. So it was five or six records an hour. And uh, then we slowly would work that down. God, that's been... We phased it out. I think, what, 97? Spring of 90... We stopped playing music at about 97. The spring of 97, we stopped playing so music. four years of some music. Yeah, yeah, some And even in the end, it was only two or three songs a record sure. an hour. So, I mean, we didn't... We met Rocket a few times during those days, and, but it wasn't like we were... I mean, he, he, was, he was a pro. He'd been around for a long time. So, you know, I think that's where we met you, you know, yeah. back in those days. Yeah. What about uh, when you first got on, what kind of a staff did you have working for you? Did you have producers? Did you, were you access to... Uh, we have the news guy we had now. Yeah, Craig. Well, yeah, Craig was there. Craig Evans uh, was our... They hired... Craig was a local guy, lived in Lincoln. That was about it. And they, our program director thought we'd get along with Craig, mm -hmm. and it... It worked. Apparently it worked. Yeah, yeah it worked, yeah. yeah. So, we, so it was just me and Todd and Craig. We had no other staff. No. I think we took a uh, producer who kind of just ended up being an errand mm -hmm. boy, the Beastmaster, about a year later. Maybe, but he was also yeah. an intern, not being paid for right. a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then we had a producer uh, soon after that, uh, but not maybe a year or two. Yeah. Who'd you bring on? Was, was Donnie Dodge our first producer? Well, Beast was technically our first producer. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then Donnie, then a friend of ours. Was Donnie there already? No, no. Donnie he was a. Uh, he, he would call and contribute. But yeah. he was yeah. a caller. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. a caller. He was Call. just a kid from North Bend. Yeah, yeah. Still funny, is. Funny guy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Funny guy. Then yeah. he went on to become a fireman. I mean, right. he worked with Jeremy for a little bit. He was uh, we, uh, still friends with Jeremy. He was a great, good producer. And then we brought in Big Puss. Puss uh, was our intern in the summer of 2000, uh, college kid at UNO, and uh, it worked out pretty well. Then he started working for the station. He was doing overnights, and then when we wanted to need a new producer, he just, he got the gig, and he's been with us ever since. So, you've had a cast of characters, yeah. over the years. Mm -hmm. Yes, on different sports guys too. I'm sorry, sports guys. Yeah. Sports guys. We had Travis for a long time, Petey Max with us, and uh, and uh, but yeah, they're, they're the two right there when it came to that. So, various news people yeah. mm -hmm. have come and gone. Yeah. One between. question I've been told to ask you. Sure. You guys ever fight, ever argue, ever really get in each other's face? Ta you know what? No. We're both passive-aggressive towards each yeah. other. And, and usually it's on the air. Right. We, uh, 
are non-confrontational. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, usually if we fight, it comes out on the air. It's, yeah, you can in, tell in, in a passive aggressive. If you fashion. know us well, and our producer knows us, uh, our, our news guy knows us, you can hear it on the air if we're really mad. But you know what? It's always been us against the world when it comes to that. I don't know how people. We've heard that for years. We meet, we met so many comedians over the years and have done other shows across the country, some other big shows, and and we've heard that they don't talk to each other. Like Bob and Tom didn't talk at the end. We had heard from some friends of ours and. Uh, it was just an old joke about they don't talk to each other. I said, well, how the hell do you do a show if you don't enjoy each other's company, at least on the air? And we got our own lives. We're busy as hell after the show. But, uh, but how do you not get along with somebody and still have fun? The audience can tell that. Oh, it's and we've never had any great... I, I swear to God, we've never fought. Yeah. We've never fought. No big philosophical schisms or anything. So we've always been on the same page. And like you said, it's us against the world. And our comedian buddy, Bobcat Goldthwaite, told us, you know, he, he calls us Tate and Teabag. <laughs> yeah. He calls all morning shows Tate and Teabag. Yeah. But, he started yeah. with us. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he would mention how he'd go on some of these shows and you know, the, somebody would prep him saying, oh, uh, Tate doesn't talk to Teabag. Yeah, yeah, and during, it's a, yeah it's during a, the commercial break, they right, wouldn't talk to it's, each it's other. Never, it's never been like that for us. Yeah. So we don't, we don't, and that's funny, we get that question a lot, but uh, no, I, I think if we're going to fight, ever, you know, no, we don't. Yeah. We don't. If you've heard us fight, you, it's, it's been on the air. And Which is the best place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, that's it, it is. It is. And it's very minor. I mean, it's, it's passive aggressive because I know mm -hmm. we're both passive. I've even mentioned that on the air that we're passive aggressive towards each other. But it's really stupid stuff. I mean, <laughs> because we, we really agree on politics. We pretty much agree on, uh, you know, just a lot of different things we don't really fight about that most right. people would fight about. What's and, funny, we agree on yeah. how to approach what on the air. We have, we have the same approach. So yeah, As with no. most Duos right. or yeah. teams, who drives the bus? Nothing to fight about. You know. Alpha male. I don't know if either one's an alpha male because we both have our own way. I, I mean, in, if you, in the studio, I run the board. I always run the board. I've always, just because we, we got together, I just said, he said, who wants to run the board? I said, I'll run the board because I just was so used to jocking for years. And Todd was a morning guy before I was, so he, he was used to sitting somewhere not jocking all the mm -hmm. time either. So I just got used to running the board. But, I mean, I'll... I'll direct the show when it comes to going to commercial breaks and things like that because I got all the stuff in front of me. But if you listen to the show, I don't know, we both kind of take the lead. Depends you know. on the topic. Yeah, you know, it so definitely depends on the yeah, topic. Somebody, yeah. somebody will run yeah. with whatever. Yeah. You know. Early we on, trust you each were, other to do Early on, were you much more caller driven? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why did you get away from that or why did that change? One of our uh, program directors told us Doug Sorensen, you know, the late Doug Sorensen. Late Doug Sorensen said, uh, you have all these people that call in and, and most people really don't give a shit what Charlie from Utan has to say. They tune in. <laughs> he, he's probably a real guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> love Charlie. He's, he's actually my friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we had a lot of callers yeah, back in those days. Yeah. People tune in to hear what Todd and Tyler have to say, so we kind of, kind of adopted that approach. Yeah, and if know? callers now, because yeah. I've heard caller-driven sports radio over the years, and and, and it is like, I don't know who this guy is, and I don't care. I mean, I, I understand what Doug was trying to tell us at the time. We just wanted everything to come off out of the air to be entertaining, so we didn't give a shit. But now that I think back, that advice was the best thing we ever had. In, in the 20-some years we've been together, that was the best advice. we. And, he, and Doug's been gone. He passed away in the late 90s. So that's been, uh, he told us that maybe 97, 98, that they, they, they want to hear what you guys have to say. Because sometimes the callers became a crutch. Oh, oh yeah, and then we learned to rely on each other, or, yeah. or you know, those around us more. And then they also got, they thought they were stars, and they got, and well, you're just a guy calls yeah. the show. <laughs> <laughs> just a guy calling a just radio a guy show. Calling, and a lot of them were funny at the time, but then a lot of them were not. So it was like, eh, what are you gonna do? Are you consciously male driven? No, because you know, are you, I mean, you check the numbers. We got pretty good, we have pretty good women numbers. Yes, I, you got but pretty I, but, good numbers everywhere. But I don't want to lose. We never wanted to lose the men. So we keep it edgy because we're dudes. We, and I think the way we bring women into our show is that we let them know what boyfriends and husbands and brothers are thinking. And we, don't, and we always tell them that. Listen, that your boyfriend, your husband, they're thinking this shit, you know. Yeah. Believe when you're me. from women, it's like, I, I listen to you guys to see what guys really think. Yeah. yeah. But you occasionally get a woman on there who really makes a contribution. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Dr. Mina. Smart Dr. Women. Mina right now, who calls the show a lot, a good friend of ours, who, who grew up in home. The Dr. Mina stories are excellent because she was a student at Westside in the 90s and listened to us in high school. Went off to uh, college in Yale, at Yale and Penn, and Harvard, excuse me, and now she teaches at Penn, and now she's a regular contributor to the show. I mean, she calls the show all the time. She stops in when she's in town visiting her family. So, yeah, we have strong women, and mainly we've met a lot of uh, 
uh, pretty strong women comedians over the years have been in the studio with us. But we don't have a, a woman on the staff. We had a few times when, when we lost Craig there for a while uh, due to some, uh, due to some shit. That, uh, they just, he just wasn't with us for about seven years in the middle of that whole run. And uh, we, we had got, several news women. We had several yeah. news girls, yeah. And but they were strong personalities. Oh, they were. They you were. have to be to put yeah. up with us. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they took it out on us, too. I mean, sure. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. MJ would throw, a, I remember <laughs> MJ for a while would throw a uh, stapler at me. It was, <laughs> we got, she would just, it, on the air. <laughs> oh, I can understand that because she was one of those types of people. Oh, yeah, she was yeah, totally, she, she was strong. She was great. She Usually was when you made a comment about her mom, <laughs> uh, she would take offense to that and then throw off a supply. So. But, yeah, we, yeah. I, I, don't, I never want to lose the women audience. The women we do have, I don't court them because we know that in this business you got to win, you got to own the man, you know, at least with, 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 with what we do for a living, you know. When's the first time you recognized that you were number one in the Omaha market? And what did it mean to you at that point? I remember me and Todd being pretty happy about that because it kind of we had some hassles at the station with management, nothing major. Just you know, you were in management for years, you know what it's like, but nothing major where we were. But we wanted to solidify our jobs, you know, and it was almost like we proved to them that what we do can win, because we did get a lot of hassle in the beginning about what we should do on the radio, from and, and from our program director. And well, that came from above, too. Yes, it did. Yeah. And it was like, oh, they're, they're trying to mold us into somebody else's stuff. And I said, no, that's not what we do. Not what we do. So and you took a risk there. We took a total yeah. risk. We, well, uh, it wasn't who we were either, you know. We wanted to achieve it on our own terms. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fail or succeed. We wanted it to be on our own terms. So I think the whole, I mean, so we came in August of 93. I think winning in men was probably 95, maybe 90. And I think, I think when, it was probably not till late 96. 96 is, I yeah. think, when we were, uh, yeah. Well, my, I think one of our favorite situations was uh, about 96, 97. We were winning, but uh, our classic rock station brought in, and we owned them, brought in Bob and Tom. And our, our, our general manager at the time said... That was on CD? Yes. Yep. Our general manager at the time, Jim McKernan, who was still a good friend of ours. From, he, he's not in the market anymore, but he, he said, well, I want you guys to be number one. I want Bob and Tom to be number two. But we, we're, we're not stupid, because that's not how that, that kind of show works. Doesn't work. Somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. So we took that personal and just beat the shit out of Bob and Tom, yeah. and, they, and they were on two different stations here and over. The, now they're not. You know. It's like no. Well, you were on the big dog. Right. Yeah, we were on the big too. dog, but they were still on the air. There was still an option for a lot of people, and it pissed us off. I think winning that one was uh, a feather in our cap. That was good. Yeah. Because yeah. we wanted to be number one, and right. we wanted Bob and Tom to eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say that on the radio? <laughs> we can't say shit. No. We can't on the internet. <laughs> God bless we can't them. on the internet. That's yeah. right. God bless the internet. <laughs> what about delay on you guys? I mean, you're pretty free oh, and yeah, fast and loose. I mean, how much of your stuff gets gets dumped? Usually, uh, it's uh, one of us. <laughs> yeah. I control Are you in charge of it? I got the dump button. It, it's not a caller. Sometimes a guest mm -hmm. or a comedian. They, but, but we like that. They, that indicates to us that they are comfortable. Yeah. If and they, live and yeah. spontaneous. But they, it's just the word shit or if somebody drops an F-bomb. That's the only thing we really believe anymore mm -hmm. because, I mean, most people get it. Uh, but it's like Todd said, it's mainly us that slips up. Yeah. And we're, we're just a little... In, in a the little, midst of a... Passion yeah, argument. Pass an argument, yeah. conversation, or we're a little, you know, less sleep, a little hungover, whatever. Somebody drops a shit or, or a fuck, and you gotta, you gotta bleep. I gotta, you know, I gotta hit that button. But uh, do you get complaints about them? If you do drop a shit on no, the we air? get complaints. People don't complain. Yeah. You can't tell. No. And, yeah, and yeah. on the stream you can hear it though. Sure. I think. Yeah. I think so. people want us to swear more, <laughs> and we wish we could. That's the only complaint we get. Yeah. Because once in a while we'll do a, somebody's podcast. Mm -hmm. and we'll, oh, it's weird to hear them swear, and it's like you don't hang around us in real life, <laughs> do you? <laughs> but I, but I still like the way trust. I hate to call it trust radio to us is just radio. Hmm. Uh, it, it, you have to be a clip more a little more clever if you don't you can't swear. Mm -hmm. And you know sometimes swearing. I mean on the air it's just eh. Whatever. I hear satellite radio, and sometimes it's gratuitous. Yeah. 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 And if it's gratuitous, it doesn't work. No, it right. doesn't work. Yeah. And callers drop the F bomb on, on satellite, too. And it's like, yeah. eh, I don't want to hear Jim calling in saying fuck. You know, it's stupid, you know? Yeah, it's ineffective. Right. Yeah. So uh, you've gone through uh, a number of general managers. So Jim McKernan, famous <laughs> for his way of running a radio yeah. station. <laughs> what was it like working under Jim? You and I have both done that. Okay, well, I'll tell you what Jim did. Jim was a fan. Yes. Yeah, before yeah. he was our boss, Jim was a fan. He worked at 42 mm -hmm. as a general manager of the TV station in town. Mm -hmm. And I was dating a girl that worked there at the time. And I, that's why I met Jim originally. And he was a fan of the show. 
and he would, I'd hear through her and through him that you guys got to stop playing music. I, you play, we were still playing maybe three, four records an hour. He goes, I tune away when there's music. And all of a sudden, management changed, and I was on, we were on vacation. Todd called me and said, hey, McKernan's our boss now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was happy. I was happy. And we butted heads with Jim on little things, nothing major. But Jim gave us our first big contract. Jim gave us our first two big contracts. I mean, big when it came to what we were at the time. Yeah, and, uh, so we'll... I'll always be grateful for that. that. Yeah, he actually yeah. paid us what I thought we were. I mean, what he thought we were worth, and uh, and that was uh, that was good. What's your good. relationship with the sales team? And what has, has it always been good? I mean, you bring in a lot of money for these folks. Well, that, that's why they pay us. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? The, sale, the sales team. There've been so many salespeople over the years. You know how yeah. radio is, but they've always been good with us. I, I think that they don't. They only come to us when uh, they need help with the endorsements, and we mm -hmm. do live endorsements now and. And I think they know what sells on the show, and you know. But you know, I salespeople. There's not. I mean, I keep forgetting this is for the Nebraska Broadcast Association. So these are radio people watching this. If, uh, if people don't sell, there's no money, and nobody's getting paid. So I'm sympathetic to that gig. Always been sympathetic. Oh yeah, I, I couldn't sell. I don't want to do that gig. God. Yeah. And so, most of them are women now. Oh yeah, a lot of Didn't them. Didn't used to be. No, no. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, a lot of them are. And they seem to get what you do. Yes, they do. Yes, they because do. it puts money in their pocket. Yeah. But I think when they first come on board, they are led to believe that we're difficult to work with. You know, until they actually meet us, and then they find mm -hmm. out that we're difficult to work with. No, we're, <laughs> no, no, we're not. No, we're really that's not. some of the younger. That's yeah. some of the guys we know in the, in the hallways always always mess with. Do people get in there? You know, don't talk to Tom yeah, Tyler. Don't, don't look at don't them. Look don't at look at them directly in the eye. And we found out later they're doing that shit. And I said, we don't, we're, we're the most <laughs> friendly guys in that building there, there is. You know? Well, you are maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't okay, know about maybe that. Maybe not, maybe not. You we're, are uh, almost directly responsible for a number of people with careers now. <laughs> that started off with you folks, you two guys, uh, back in the day when they were unknowns, virtually. And uh, you've kind of helped them along. I think the biggest one that was nobody until he hooked up with you was Larry the Cable Guy. Well, in this area, Larry yeah. was on radio in Orlando for a long time. Uh, calling in a radio show down there, actually working for a radio show down there. But he and was just on the comedy circuit. Nothing, yes. Nothing special. Yeah. No, he was... Uh, but I think the Pixar people helped out with <laughs> the cable guy. Yeah, but that was probably the, more than we did. <laughs> but that was yeah. a little later. Yeah. No, in the beginning, Larry was great with us because he would call the show, and because we met him through Colleen at the Funny Bone. And you're right, he was just a headliner. I shouldn't say just a headliner, because that's a pretty good gig. But he wasn't huge, and, and uh, he was huge. We were the station. We were, I was gonna say we were the station he called in this area. So yeah, it helped a but lot. But he was perfect yeah. for the interplay that you guys yes, put right, him yeah. through. And, and, it, and I we were listening to those days, and it was just uproariously yeah. funny. And he, because he's a Nebraska boy, you know, right? He, he, fre he frequented the club here. You know, it was one of you know. Yeah, I think he had a good run, and so he he was big in Baltimore. Albany and Omaha. Omaha. Yeah. There were and he several, lived in Jupiter, Florida, back then. Yeah, he did. Uh, Orlando. Yeah, Orlando, yeah, yeah Sanford, yeah. Florida. Sanford, Sanford. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, but yeah, he was—he became a good friend, you know. I mean, he's obviously a busy man, he, and we see him once in a while, you know. He call still once in a while, but, but I'm be... hesitant to take credit for his success. <laughs> he's, a, he's a very talented man. Oh, God, and yours yeah. is very humble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and some of the other names that you've had on over the years, I guess maybe one that may be controversial. I don't know if you want to talk about it at all. It's Kevin Spacey. We spent a lot of time on your show and has come to a kind of a difficult time. No, Kevin, we've talked to Kevin Spacey. I don't know. Oh. You might be getting that wrong. With I somebody. might have the wrong guy. Yeah, yeah you, you got the, the wrong, wrong guy. guy. See, that's yeah. what happens when you get old. That's okay, man. <laughs> no. Give me some of the other. We have names. a lot of actors and and, yeah. and and stars on the show over the years, been on the phone with us, but uh, I don't think we ever talked to Kevin Spacey. Okay. No, no. So I'm sorry. We'll yeah. have to edit that one out. <laughs> yeah. uh, but give me some of the other names that you've worked with over the years that you put on the air in Omaha. Your favorites. Well, we're like oh, uh, Lewis Black. Lewis yes, Beck, yeah. become a good friend of ours. He's a friend. Even Bob, off the air. Bobcat Goldthwait. Bobcat. He's a good friend of ours. Jack Hanna, Jungle Jack Hanna, who we've never met in person. Yeah. You know, but you know, we'll spend an entire segment, in fact, just the other day. Yeah, we, we talked to him yesterday. An yeah. entire segment talking yeah. to him. So yeah. we'll visit with him every few months or so. And he's a funny dude. He's yeah. a really funny and a dirty guy, too. <laughs> dirty, man. And nobody, he doesn't talk anytime. He never does. They never talk. Nobody lets Jungle Jack talk. And we do. And he, that's, how, that's why we bonded with him. He loves talking to us. Yeah, so. he tells stories. Yeah. yeah. And, and usually when Which you see him. Which is what you guys yeah, do. Yeah, well, when you see him yeah. on TV, he's just talking about animals. You know, and he gives us personal anecdotes, which you don't get when, you know, he's going on. Ellen or whoever, yeah. Colbert. Yeah. Or, I don't know. I know so many comedians and so many actors we've had on the show that I don't, but like well, the guys are recurring. Well, we're talking to Lewis next week for the holidays, and uh, he calls frequently. We mentioned Bobcat. There's been, you know, 
So many famous comedians have been on that show with us. So so much success over so many years. How <laughs> come you've never left? Why are you still in Omaha? That's a lot of people in your position would try to get into a Boston or a New York or an L.A. Well, that's a great question. We could get a lot. I think we've priced ourselves out. <laughs> Nobody's going to pay us what we're making now no. a, as an upstart morning show somewhere. And there's, we, have, hey, we have some equity here. Yeah. And it's always a chance if you go right. somewhere else. Yeah, we could Might just, not work. We, we could fail. Well, in, in 06, we did go to the, the company at the time that we wanted to be syndicated. We were, we were thinking, we just wanted a bigger audience. This is before the internet, when all the streaming and this stuff now is crazy. If you can listen anywhere in the country to us now with the apps and the Alexa and all that stuff. But we wanted to be syndicated in 06. And uh, they, they, didn't, they didn't want to lose us. We didn't say, we weren't quitting. We, our contract was still, in, we were like in another year or two in the contract. We said, we really want to have more audience, just a bigger audience. Because we wanted to grow and keep ourselves viable at the time. And uh, our company owned the station in Wichita. They put us on in Wichita in 06. And we do really well now. We actually, we're number one down there in most demos are so, in, in Wichita also. And then we've been on Lincoln now for about 10 years. We've been on and off a couple of different stations across the country. Because, but they, they changed formats, closed it. Or didn't get you. Or didn't get us. That happened a couple of places. Yeah. yeah. But to be honest with you, with the Internet and with the app and all that stuff, and everybody can listen anywhere. anywhere you know, and, they're trying, and they're trying to monetize that, which is real nice. Because our podcasts per month are amazing numbers, so the whole th business has changed. We had off. We didn't have offers. We had feelers from Miami and L.A. back in the day, but it was like Todd was right. It was like you know, you can go somewhere and work three months and not be working anymore. You know, Todd had younger kids at the time. It didn't really matter to me. We were doing well here, but Todd's right about the money situation. Now I'd rather just be here. You know. The money is good, though. Yes. Yes. Very good. They're, they've been nice to us. Are you the highest paid personalities in Omaha Radio? I hope so. Uh, yeah, we better be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we are. I don't know. I, you know what? That's, isn't that weird about money? Nobody talks about money. And because uh, and I don't tell people what I make. Todd knows what I make. We make the exact same thing. And my wife knows. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think I'm sure we are, yeah. yeah. As it should be. You oh, yeah. You bring, up the, you bring in the demos. You know, you bring in the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you've By the way, for the syndication, I wanted to mention oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that that I'll, that credit goes to the late great Tom Land. Oh, oh yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who was, Tom uh, and Steve Wexler. Right. I say Steve too. Our Where friend is Wex now? And Wex mentor. Wex is because uh, I know they sold the station. They in sold, Milwaukee. They sold scripts, and the scripts sold us, and then he they sold all radio, mm -hmm. and then he left, and now he's back in Milwaukee running uh, WTMJ. The cluster, up, back in his old cluster. He's running oh, his really? old cluster. Yeah. Yep, yep. And that's now a sports format, isn't sports, it? Sports, and they have a, yeah, they got both sports. They got AM yeah. and FM sports. Yeah, sure. he's, he's up there hanging yeah. out with the Packers. He's back in his hometown. He's loving it, yeah. So he's happy. Yeah, we still keep it. He touch. seems to be, yeah. 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 And, um, he had, and he didn't have to be our boss anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. He, he was one of the stream of general managers. Yes, he was. That but, went through yeah. Z92. Yes, yeah. And things are good over there now. You've got a new company and new general manager. Of well, I, yes. Our general manager now is uh, was our sale. We worked with her, and she was on sales in the nineties. Yeah. Uh, so Kathy, she knew what she, she come was getting over into. When, Kathy, what? when Journal brought bought CD one hundred and five. Yes. I think she was a salesperson. Yes. Or the sales manager. Yeah. And she came CD over then. Yeah. yeah. So with we, the knew, we knew Kathy for years, yeah. and then she went away for about ten years to do other things. And then when they hired her back, it was great. It was like, oh my God, now we're just, now our boss is uh, one of the old salespeople we used to work with. So. so you guys are a legitimate part of Omaha Radio history because you've been through so much of it. Yeah. You've lived it. Seven general managers, uh, I think the count is. Yeah, we like most of them. Yeah. <laughs> and three companies. Right? Uh, Narragansett, Journal, Scripps. Scripps. Scripps this is Summit. our fourth company. Fourth yeah. company. Yeah. Fourth company now. Yeah. So you think Summit. it's going to last? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we got two years left on this deal mm -hmm. right now. You're both uh, pretty good health. You look good. Uh, you have families here in Omaha. Uh, how long are you going to do this? How long do you want to do it? Obviously, the money's great, but why? Why would you want to do it uh, if if you don't have to? As long as they want us. Mm -hmm. to well. Do it. Yeah, I, I, I was mentioning you off the air. I mean, Todd's kids are grown, but he's still, it's, uh, you know, well, you know what it's like. you got grown kids, you still spend money on them. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be bored. If no. I retired, I would be bored. Yeah. What do you do when you're not on the air? Oh, well, I golf. Golf? And I travel. Yeah. yeah. That's your big, big interest. Yeah. And yeah, we try, we try, those are the two. We try to get out of town, even yeah. uh, both of us. Just, just for, but, uh, 
No, like I was telling you we were, before we, we went, we had uh, coffee before we started this today, that um, people ask us about retiring, and, and, and that's a legitimate question, but I mean, I don't want to retire. Uh, because, well, you're too young. Well, that's that's the main thing. I'm too, <laughs> yeah. In this day and age, why retire? You yeah. know, I can, you know, I can work a lot longer than this. And uh, it's a fun gig, with the exception of the alarm clock. Yeah. Where else can I get paid to tell dick jokes for four and a half hours a day, you know? Nobody's going to do it's that. It's not a government job, so <laughs> we, we're not counting the days like, no. uh, like a lot of people yeah, are. Yeah, I know people like yeah. that. I don't blame them, you know? I don't blame them. We get out of bed, and we actually look forward yeah. you know, to doing what we do. Have you mellowed over the years somewhat? Uh, our personal lives, yes. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I don't think on the air so much. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we can still get, get, get after it on the air, but I don't... We, because that's just that's because we've mellowed in our personal lives. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, 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 can, we have the energy to get yeah, out. That's a good point. Yeah, we have to save the energy for the air. We don't burn the candle at both ends like we did in the, early, in the 90s, for sure. You know, And we, you, we're, we're pretty open about that. Are you still spending time together off the air, families together? Or a lot of guys do, some guys don't. Well, lately I've, I've just been traveling watching his kids get married. <laughs> yeah, we were, just both, we were both in California. His daughter lives out there, and she got married. We all went out there. But, uh, you know, we're... I'm busy with my kids. They're teenagers now in high school and sports and all that stuff. And Todd's busy with his wife and all their stuff they got going on. So we don't hang out off the air much, but it's not because we avoid it. We just If know. we do, it's to see our kids in action. Yeah, exactly. Or right, I'll go watch right. his boy play baseball. Right, yeah. and he'll watch my daughter get married. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. But that has softened a little bit the approach on the air, hasn't it? Eh, from where it started. You know what? Sometimes... <laughs> Ah, oh, God, that's a great question. That is I think a good question. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, people around town say that. It's not just me. Yeah. You talk to people about Todd and Tyler. Yeah, yeah you know, with, or maybe it's just an impression that you guys were much more raw when you first started. Well, we were raw because it, I, well, I think I, I also take that as a compliment that we're, I mean, we can still be polished and be, and still do, and do a good job. And I, maybe, raw, raw yeah. was more... You can't stay raw for 26 years. <laughs> you know? you, you got to evolve. you got to polish Well, you're right, because we talked about that, too. You know, of course, yeah. we don't have strippers on the air like we did in the 90s. We don't, uh, uh, you know, a bunch of shit we don't do that we did in, in the mid-90s. Mid but it's also radio has evolved. And right. The people want to be entertained. The medium you know? has changed, yeah. too. People want to be entertained. And, yeah, oh, we definitely evolved to different. Uh, I, I hate, to, hate the word, because, you know, I, I still think you don't shock people nowadays, but I still think we say that, we tell people that the truth, what we think is the truth. And we've and never I, set out to shock anybody. No, it's no. like, you know, never, some people have the approach, uh, who can we piss off today? But no, we, we just like to piss off people naturally. Yeah. You know, I, I'm don't, surprised, I don't like to force that. Yeah, and I'm surprised that, you know, if we talk about our personal ha habits in the day, back in the day, that I'm so surprised people were surprised by that. I'm thinking, you don't understand, people partied a lot. You know, they did in, in the era that we grew up. And, and uh, But you can't burn the candle too much because you got to, Stay alive, <laughs> yeah, especially when you're getting up the time of the morning. You guys have to get yes. up in the morning. That's it. I can't. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I'm. I don't, I'm not saying I, I'm not hungover once in a while in the morning, but uh, but depending if uh, we have an advantage to do something during the week, you want to get out of town, to get out of the house for a week or night. One of the advantages of radio is that people don't know what you look like, so you can go out around town and people don't know who you That's are. That's not true. No, uh, it's really unfortunately, not. there's social media, and when you've been around town long enough. People still recognize. Yeah, they do. And actually, I don't mind that because people, that, that means 99.9% 99 of the people, <coughs> if they don't bother you, they'll mm -hmm. say, hey, I love the show. Thank you. Or yeah. if they hate you, they just don't walk They're out. They're not to out you. to right. pick a fight. No, no. Anybody that approaches you is, you know, going to be congenial. Yeah, anymore. Yeah. Anymore. People be, don't realize when you two first came to town and started this whole mission. Right. You worked your asses off. You worked, I remember it, you worked very hard. Anytime there was anything going on in town, you guys were there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, people don't give you credit for that sometimes because they don't remember the history. And a lot of people have, you know, kids have grown up <coughs> and grandkids have grown up listening to you. Yeah. Some of your original listeners are grandparents now. Yeah, and also, and, and what I like about that is that a lot of people grew up uh, that were kids that still listen. I mean, they were little kids mm -hmm. and they... And they, we were like their baby. I don't think we shouldn't have been their babysitter. But, uh, but uh, uh, what did they, they grow up to become? They, they were, they're in the car with their dad, and when they were in the in the, in the 90s or their 2000s, and now they mm -hmm. listen, and now yeah. their kids listen. So I think you can stay relevant that way as long as you stay engaging and, and funny. It's all it just it's makes multi generational fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> We've always been about multi generational fun. People uh, <laughs> tend to think that you're just a couple of uh, fun guys. Yeah. You don't take anything seriously, and that's not true. I mean, you guys are pretty intelligent. 
You couldn't do this successfully for as long as you have unless you understood exactly what you were doing. I think we're both curious and um, with the world, and I think I, 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 thanks for the intelligent part. But yeah. I think I think it's more curious than anything. I think we've always just we've always been both very curious about what goes on, politics, all, everything, just everything involved, life, people. I don't think I don't get too heavy about it, but I think that. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons we would last so long is because we're not just, uh, you know, come out here and, and uh, it's not, not just strippers on the radio. You know? I think the best advice I ever got about doing a morning show was, uh, I don't know if I read it or if Scott Shannon said it at a seminar or something, mm -hmm. but read everything and watch everything, no. which of course is impossible, but that's, <laughs> I, still, nowadays, I yeah. still try to do that. Yeah. That's your show prep. Yep, right. that is. Just jam my brain full of too much information. And we do get haters. I mean, we still got a lot of haters, and, and which is fine. Because God if bless you. If you don't have haters, you don't have people listening. I mean, and now we don't even go out, the, go out of our way, but sure. if you, uh, now that people can get closer to you with email and, and Twitter and Facebook, uh, there's some brutal, we get some brutal shit said about us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I joke about it on the radio. We don't read any, much of it on the air. But, you know, I'm not saying we can't take it because we're big boys and we dish it out. But there's some brutal, brutal people that uh, don't have a fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about That's that. That's all right. Yeah, That's all right. Yeah. More ways to lash out. Yeah. There is no dump button there. No, 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 I was going to say, I'm about to hit my own dump button over Before here. we go too far down the road here, what about the bobbleheads? <laughs> Give me the history of the bobbleheads. Uh, those were incredibly popular, <laughs> and now that we have these here, they're a little rare. I think these if they days. were that popular, we'd still they have made them. A, they made a lot of them, yeah. and Subway was a sponsor. So that, you know, everything, yeah. everything so, and they made a lot of them back in the day. And uh, people still people <laughs> find these somewhere. And I brought some in for uh, for Marty who wanted some, and uh, God, they've been around forever, and uh, it, they're funny. They really do look yeah. like you too. Yeah, yeah, back in the day, yeah, yeah, that's us. Yeah, that's how we all. That's how we always stood too. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> With a big subway sign right between you. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Well, subway actually at the time had a, a sandwich in town named after us too. We we invented it on the show. We, we designed. And the that's sandwich. how they got a hold of that. That was a good yeah. promotion. Actually, it was a really good promotion. And a good that. sandwich. Yeah, yeah, it was a good sandwich. It was excellent. Yeah. Politicians, it can be the death of some radio shows. Yeah. You two seem to know how to work politics and politicians. Some who hate you, some who love you, right. some will come on with you, some won't. Right. But what is your, your theory behind politics on your show? Right now we uh, try to avoid it for the most part because it's, uh, there's a lot of fatigue. Oh, we'll do a lot of low, we'll still yeah. do, we'll, we'll do social issues more on the air. Yeah. I mean, and we do still talk about Nebraska's, what, Nebraska should have legalized weed, Kansas should have legalized weed, and that's where our main hammering on Ricketts is. We met Ricketts years ago, and he didn't like us, I get it, but, because we call him out every day, but he doesn't give a shit about us, I don't care about him either for that matter. <laughs> but, uh, but politicians in the past, since we're talking local stuff, you know, we were, uh, Ben Nelson, we met Ben, Years ago, and uh, and he was, yeah, you know, and it, it, he was always real nice to us, and he didn't need to be because we were just a couple younger guys messing around on the radio. But I think he knew that we knew what we were talking about when he was on the show with us. I think he sensed that we were concerned about what's going on in the world. I think that's why he took us seriously. Uh, the mayor's races over the years, we don't talk much mayor like the stuff that we don't talk about much because we don't we're not we don't talk about mayors anymore since we've been syndicated. So we we haven't talked that local. But back in the day, you know. Mike Fahey was a friend. Still see Mike once in a while. About he's always real nice to us. And then, like I said, it, and we've had uh, well, Joe Hans when Joe Hans was governor. He was nice to us. Yeah. He oh, and, oh, who? Uh, Heineman. Right. Yes, Heineman was real nice. Dave to Heineman us. named right. me commissioner of fishing. <laughs> I still have the certificate. Did you yeah, get a check? We, we, there were a couple of uh, <laughs> Republican governors yeah. before it got all hyper partisan yeah. that we, we got along with. Right. And uh, yeah, and, and uh, Governor Joe Hans named it uh, was Todd and Tyler Day in two thousand uh, yeah. across the uh, state yeah. of Nebraska. Heineman was really, Heineman wanted yeah. us to broadcast from the governor's mansion years ago. And we wanted them to make it an annual thing, but apparently it was just a, <laughs> can't do a one time deal. So lately. Yeah. Uh, once Trump got elected, and we were kind of on that bandwagon, which we still don't think he's, we still think he's you know, he's not obviously not qualified. That'd be the nice thing I can say about the guy. But we kind of laid off that because of the, it's so crazy now. It's so crazy, and for our own sanity, and nobody told us this. I wanted to get this out there. Nobody, not one boss, and we disagree with politics. Some of our bosses, not one boss told us to lay off. We just, <laughs> for our own sanity, we want to have fun. And, and for the audience. And the audience, Sandy, right. Yeah. And, and 
we want everybody just to laugh. Now, we'll throw in our personal opinion, and it's pretty obvious what we, what we think about certain things. But mainly, it's let's have fun. Yeah. And if it is political, we try to stick social issues. Social issues, because yeah. then, because, you know, because we can agree on a lot of yeah. social issues, you know. I mean, somebody get me some weed, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Where's a guy supposed to buy weed around here? In Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another area, because of where you are, was a little sensitive for a while. I'm not sure it still is. Yeah. Nebraska football. Yeah. You were pretty controversial in comments. The best over part the about years. what I'm proud about the most is that we slayed a lot of uh, sacred cows. Sacred cows. Because yeah. we came in, I've talked to people about this, and friends of mine that are my age but grew up here. I said, you know, Todd and I weren't from here. So Todd grew up in North Dakota, I grew up in Pennsylvania. We had favorite teams from those areas. Uh, and Todd went to Arizona State, so he became an Arizona State fan. I was a Penn State fan for years, still am. And I like Pittsburgh, and he likes the uh, Vikings. So, but the college football thing was so, we moved here in 93 when the Huskers were really, really good. So, you know, remember those years? They were unbeatable. So we were host a lot of parties, and it just got to be overbearing because they were just so good, so good, so good. And we slayed those drag. We just slayed those all the time because we make fun of that. We still do to this day, but the funny part is, all these years later, Half those guys that were all played back in the 90s are friends of ours, and they're on the show, and they get it because they understand how fans can be overbearing. And we still jab at fans. But obviously, they don't, they, they're they good fans. They like their team, but we jab at them because we can. But we didn't like most media people coming here just pretending to love the... I, it's I, fake. I, I guess we gave them a chance. Yeah. We, we actually did give them a chance, and our hatred for the fan base <laughs> came naturally. But, but the weird part about that, you know, what was weird about that was, it sounds weird, like, how do you hate people that like your show? Well, we really didn't hate them. We just we realized that football fans, can you cannot like people's teams and give each other shit. Yeah. That's how I grew up. I, I grew up people giving people shit. I still see, I saw some discussion on social media <laughs> yeah. the other day, yeah. like, how can they uh, uh, debase their, well, I don't know what... Verb, About us? Verbiage he used. You know, like, we're blanketing, he was blanketing all of Nebraska. I think we tapped into uh, some people who aren't necessarily fans, who find the fans overbearing, who aren't, didn't grow up here. Well, there's a lot of Iowa fans in the area, too. Yeah. And right. Omaha, you know as well as I do, is, uh, how much has grown up in the past 25 years. It's, there's peop a lot of transient people here moving in and out. So you get a lot of that base, too. And I think the Husker fans just, eh, we know, we know. And you, we give them shit. That's we get it. it. The Lincoln thing is crazy. We've been on the blaze in Lincoln for 10 years. And, uh, and the Lincoln fans, they, take, they like it. So it's like, I don't, they, they, they might not like I think they're bumping themselves more than anything now because their team's not that good right now. <laughs> but it's just... It's just I, I don't like to pick on kids who play football because they're just kids. But the fan base is what we try. But I think they've come to accept Most people have come to accept it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was some time there when the feedback oh, was pretty shit. nasty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because no one had ever gotten on the air and hated the Huskers out right. loud. Right. Yeah. But and like you said. That, that was unheard yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was crazy, Ben. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But crazy. we just couldn't fake it. No. Yeah. And then we reveled in it because the feedback <laughs> was great. The feedback was fun. Yeah. yeah. We kind of did revel in it, yeah. you know. On encouraged purpose. it. Encouraged it, yes, yeah, totally, sure. totally. What is uh, your favorite moment together on the air? I know you've had many, oh, some God. controversial, some really ecstatic, some very sad. And you've shown emotion on the air, and so have your listeners. Is there anything that really stands out as far as one oh, moment? Oh, jeez. That's a tough question. Sure. Sad part, two of them, uh, losing, our, uh, losing our buddy uh, Tom Land, who was a, a mentor of ours. Yeah. Brother. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Jay Medicine Hat. Right. Yeah. We lost Jay. That was tough. Uh, yeah, he got me. Down. Jesus, I cried. Of course, Todd knows I cry like a puss. Uh, yeah, those two are pretty tough when it comes to sad part. Fun part. God damn it. There's been so many fun times. Made a lot of friends. Yeah. Made a lot yeah. of friends That's in the it. comedy world. That's and it. still have them. Yeah, the yeah. comedy yeah. world. Knowing a lot of famous, not, not just famous people, just comedians. Are, Got to know them and, and getting a good reputation and hanging out with those guys was, was pretty cool, yeah. But um, Todd, and I, Todd and I, we don't like to live in the past. This is about the past. I get the interview. But radio to us is what happens Monday. Mm -hmm. Because you live in the past, you don't have a job. And I can't ignore the past because we've been here a long time. But it, once in a while, I sit down and go, holy shit. But we also just, you know, 
26 years. <laughs> on the air, 26 years. Lot. Yeah, that's yeah. a long time. Is there anybody that you haven't Just had? Just ask the Husker fan what it's like to live in the past. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there anything that you wish you would have done differently or something that an interview that you oh, miss yes. or a guest you always wanted and couldn't yeah. get? Yeah. Oh, God. <clears throat> There are certain times in every interview over the years that I think both of us have realized, ah, I wish I wouldn't have said that. I wish I had a better question there. But nothing, nothing that really embarrassed us. Once in a while, you say something offhanded with a, a guest, and they're not playing along, especially on the phone. A famous actor or a famous musician or somebody like that on the phone that might not get in, might not understand. They don't know you are anyway. They're just mm -hmm. calling. Some, some of those go going <coughs> south once in a while. But when they go south, it's usually, our, our listeners are great because they will defend us and they will just rip whoever the interview went south with, you know, so that's I pretty cool. recall a major regret. No, I don't yeah. either. I, I don't, yeah. you know, I come a lot away, of personal regrets. Yeah, I get off the air and say, <laughs> well, that could have been better yeah. and that could have been better. Do you air check yourselves? No, I can't listen to us because ah, I should have said this. I should have said that. It's tougher now. They're yeah. running us on. Uh, I'm pretty critical. The show runs 24 yeah. 7 on the HD channel now on Z92. Mm -hmm. HD2 has the show all day. And it started out about a month ago. So I've, te I've checked it out in the car to make sure it's working. Our boss wanted us to check it out. And it's like, holy shit, the show's on. Like the, today's show's on all weekend on HD2, Z92. And I'm thinking, so I don't listen much either, like Todd says. I'll, I'll listen. Uh, because it, it's too, we're too critical, even to this day. You know, I'll laugh though. I'll, there's a best of on Saturday mornings on Z, and I'll be in the car take, doing something with the kids, and you know, but the kids don't want to hear it anyway. But I'll hear it. All that, and I'll laugh if I know a joke was funny. Everybody's laughing at it. But uh, oh, we're funny. Oh yeah. <laughs> but there's just times where wow, we could have been funnier. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. we could, yeah. Or yeah. that, or that sucked. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh yeah. There's a lot of that. That sucked. <laughs> <laughs> you really are your own worst critics. Oh, big time. Uh, yeah. Anybody, yeah. I think anybody in the radio You have to is. be. I think, anybody, I think you have yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you definitely have to be. You started out in the beginning uh, to build a career. You built a career, obviously. Your families have benefited. You, go, you guys have benefited. And the market, obviously, has benefited. You've been number one for so long. Is there a fear that you're going to outlast your welcome? Always. Yeah, that's a Always. good question. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I think that's why we tried to diversify in the beginning with the with the syndication a little bit because I always felt like we can always be new to somebody, and I think that helps with the. Uh, but you're right, Omaha is paying our bills, so it yeah, it's it is what it is. But we don't we try not to be uh, complacent, especially when those mics are on, because it's very easy to do. Anybody's ever done radio, yeah, personality you're... radio, it's very easy. To try to, to think you can coast on a break, but you can't. You have to hit the refresh button on a regular to. basis, right. all the time. And yeah, well, I, a lot I, of people think they can do what you two do. Yes, they do. They think it's easy. Yeah. You just show up and and just blah blah blah. Well, come yeah. on, we'll kick your ass. <laughs> 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 no, you're right. They do, and I think uh, and, and you're in the bu you've been in the business for a long time, longer than we have. So you know it's tough, and you know it's. Uh, to be there every morning and, and try to try to make something entertaining and interesting that people listen to is a pain in the ass. Yeah. But it is what it is, and you, we like what we do. Oh, yeah, we have heard that. You know, oh, well, if I could say uh, dick and pussy on the air, then I could be number one, too. Yeah. Well, then why don't you try it? Right, right. Yeah. There are a lot of other stations that would give them the chance. Yeah. Yes. If they could beat you. Yeah, right. But I mean, they can't. No. Well, anybody can say that, but can everybody pull it off? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> dick and pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just pulled it off. Didn't he? he did. <laughs> he pulls it off. Todd and Tyler, legendary Omaha radio oh, personality. Oh, Jesus. That well, you are legendary. Hard. I know. But Look that, what you've done. I know, but thank Look you. Look at what you've accomplished. Well, you know what, though? I'll give you that. That, that is what we, that's what we don't talk about, believe me. Right. We, him and I do not talk about. Well, you, you know, we, we, uh, we, uh, I have a contract. Do, in two years, we have another contract coming up. And that's what I want. I want another contract. You know, I want to keep working and, and have fun. But to your credit, there is a degree of humility about you, about what you've done, what you've accomplished, that nobody else has ever done. Yeah. And uh, you should I be proud of that, I'm I, sure. Well, very proud yeah, of that. that. That's nice. But totally it, proud of it. It uh, doesn't mean anything on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. day. We still have to do a good show on Monday. Yeah, very true. Or yeah. Tuesday. <laughs> uh, thanks to Todd and Tyler. Thank you, Thank you man. Uh, yeah, they'll be on Monday and Tuesday. Yep. <laughs> Uh, their history, their perspectives on Omaha, 
unique, of course, are also thanks to Jeff Saban here at WWT Channel 6 in Omaha. For the Nebraska Broadcasters Association, Executive Director Jim Tim, and the uh, chairman... Oh, talk about Jim. We know Jim. <laughs> Hi, Jim. <laughs> now you know. Sorry. That's all right. No, you no, got... we work with Jim. Hi, Jim. Jim Tim. <laughs> One of our seven general managers. Yes, he was for yeah. a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Or eight. I don't remember. Is it eight? But he's, he's cool. Yeah. Jim's he lasted. cool. Yeah. Jim's he cool. for a while. Yeah. Right. Our executive director, Jim Tim, and uh, our chairman emeritus, Marty Raymond Schneider. Marty! Hey, Marty. We know Marty. For the NBA History Project, I'm Neil Nelkin. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, Neil. Appreciate Thanks for having it. us. Thank you.